Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Magic Pill Monday where we look at all kinds of supplements and the scientific evidence behind them to see if it's a good investment, if it can help your performance somehow or if it's going to be a waste of money. And today we're talking about Alpha GPC. Maybe well known because Andrew Huberman talks about it. He hosts the Huberman Lab podcast which is a very popular podcast. And he often says he takes Alpha GPC to increase his focus. But there are more reasons to take Alpha GPC, so let's have a look. So why would you supplement Alpha GPC? Well, there's some research that shows that it can improve your strength. It might increase your growth hormone. And it might lead to a cognitive enhancement, meaning an increase in focus or memory. And you cannot really get it from food, at least not in a sufficient amount. So on the right here, we see an effective dose is about 300 milligrams per day. And if you look at what you can find in food, you can find maybe like 10 up to 80 milligrams per 100 gram of product. And most people just don't consume enough of these types of food in order to reach that 300 milligrams per day. So if we want to get the benefits from Alpha GPC, we really do need to supplement. Now, it looks like it has a lot of great benefits, but it might also be dangerous for heart health. At least there's some research that indicates this might be the case, and we're going to look at that as well in this presentation. So first, a quick overview of what Alpha GPC really does. So when we take Alpha GPC, and that's the molecule right here, it is deconstructed into different elements, and about 40% of alpha GPC is actually choline. So in the body it is deconstructed into choline. And choline in turn can increase the amount of a neuromodulator known as acetylcholine. Now other known, well-known neuromodulators are for example dopamine and serotonin. And alpha GPC can thus increase acetylcholine in the brain and in the muscles. And acetylcholine is actually essential for focus, memory formation, but also for activating the muscles. So let's see a couple of benefits based on science. So the first one is workout performance. So we're going to look at a couple of studies. And the first one here is looking at 13 young healthy males that were taking 600 milligrams a day for six days. And they were doing all kinds of tests actually. But one of the tests they did was called an isometric strength test and you can see the test here on the picture so basically what they're doing is they're doing some sort of deadlift and there is a force measurement on the floor that is just measurement measuring how much force they are producing and they were comparing of course people that were taking alpha gpc 600 milligrams with people that were not taking any alpha gpc the placebo group and as you can see from the results the Alpha GPC group produced 50.9 newtons in measurement of force, while the placebo group after six days produced less than they were doing beforehand, so minus 14.9. So we see that Alpha GPC seems to be able to increase the strength of these people, at least in this particular exercise. The next one is another study done in 48 young healthy males. And in this case, they were either taking 500 milligrams or 250 milligrams of alpha GPC for seven days. And they were testing all these different kinds of movements right here. Now, what they saw that by the end of this study was people that were taking 250 milligrams of alpha GPC, they saw an increase in the maximum velocity and the maximum power in the counter movement jump. But what is interesting about this study is that no improvements were seen in the other exercises and no improvements were also seen in the groups of the guys that were taking 500 milligrams. So only in the 250 milligram group, they saw an increase. So that is a little bit strange about the study. However, it still seems that alpha GPC can increase some measurements of power, strength, velocity, or exercise performance. We have another study and here we see again 20 young healthy participants. In this case, it was 50-50 males and females. And they were taking 200 milligrams or 400 milligrams of alpha GPC. And they were measuring the vertical jump power. 
And in this case, they were not taking it for a few days back to back, but they were simply taking it, taking it 30 minutes before the workout. So what you can see from this graph is that alpha GPC low stands for 200 milligrams and alpha GPC high stands for 400 milligrams. And on the Y axis, we have a measurement of the vertical jump power. And as you can see, compared to the placebo group, there's definitely an increase in the people taking alpha GPC. However, according to the study conclusion, the results were not significant because there were simply too many variations between individuals in the study. So even though we see this outcome, we cannot actually consider this outcome very reliable according to the authors of the study. And here in the final study, talking about workout performance, we have a study looking at seven young, healthy males with at least two years of experience in training. They were taking 600 milligrams of alpha GPC about 90 minutes before the workout, and they saw a 14% increase in peak bench press force. So as you saw, a lot of different studies in young, healthy people that show some sort of improvement in workout performance when taking alpha GPC. The second benefit worth talking about is that it seems that taking alpha GPC can definitely increase the release of growth hormone. So we have two studies here. In the first studies, they used uh, 600 milligrams of alpha GPC and they saw a 440% increase in growth hormone in a group taking alpha GPC. And in this case, they combined uh, the supplementation with exercise. And in the second study, they used 1,000 milligrams of alpha GPC and they saw a 290% increase in growth hormone and they were not doing any exercise here. So the reason you see a larger increase in growth hormone in the first study is because exercise on its own typically also induces an uh, increase in growth hormone. Now, although this seems to be a very significant increase, what also both studies showed is that after the peak of increase due to the alpha GPC, the growth hormone levels quickly return to a normal baseline, similar to people not taking any alpha GPC. And the question is how impactful is this increase in growth hormone really in terms of performance in the end? This has not been studied very well. However, in the second study, they did note that the increase in growth hormone release also caused an increase in fat burning. So that might be an interesting um, result of the increase in growth hormone. So the third benefit is that alpha GPC supplementation might be able to enhance our cognitive abilities, meaning memory and focus. But this has mainly been studied in patients suffering from some sort of dementia or Alzheimer's. So in this first study here, we can read the compound, and we're talking about alpha GPC here, exerts neuroprotective effects in models of altered cholinergic neurotransmission and of brain vascular injury. So these are people that have already some sort of Alzheimer's, dementia, or brain injury. And in those people, we see that alpha GPC has neuroprotective effects. In clinical studies, choline alphoscarate, this is another name for alpha GPC, improved memory and intention, attention impairment, as well as effective and somatic symptoms in dementia disorders. An ongoing trial indicates that association between the acetylcholinesterase inhibitor Donepezil and choline alphoscarate, so alpha GPC, is accompanied by an improvement in several cognitive tests superior to that induced by Donepezil alone. So in other words, when we take alpha GPC on top of this other supplement, we see greater results and improvements in cognitive features. In summary, alpha GPC has significant effects on cognitive function with a good safety profile and tolerability. Here, another study. They looked at several people taking 400 milligrams of alpha GPC three times a day, so a total of 1200 milligrams for 180 days. And they were doing a bunch of different tests related to cognitive abilities and 
specifically when it comes to people with Alzheimer's. And in the conclusion, we see that in the CA group, so this is a group that is taking alpha-GPC, all other assessed parameters, and these are all kinds of different tests, consistently improved after 90 and 180 days versus baseline. Whereas in the placebo group, they remained unchanged or worsened. So in other words, all these different tests, like we see here in the text, the assessment scale, cognitive subscale, the mini mental state examination, etc., all improved taking alpha GPC, whereas in the people that were not taking any supplements, the results in these tests remained unchanged or got even worse. Now the issue with alpha GPC and the research around cognitive enhancement is that all the research seems to be done in people suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia. So we're really left with the question, can alpha GPC also increase memory and focus in healthy people? And the only study that comes close to this is this study right here on the screen. And it's not actually looking at alpha GPC, but it's looking at donezepil, a different kind of supplement or pharmaceutical that has similar effects. So basically it can increase acetylcholine in the brain. And what the results said from the study is that additionally, the Nesapil significantly improved long-term visual episodic recall. In none of the other functions under investigation, any significant treatment effects were observed. In other words, they were looking at memory, different kinds of memory in this study, and how this drug could improve these different types of memory. And what they saw was that donezepil, which has a similar effect in the end as alpha GPC, could increase visual memory. So there seems to be some ability of alpha GPC potentially increasing memory or cognitive functions in healthy people. Now the fourth benefit of alpha GPC is actually one that is quite unknown and I should add not very researched. However, it is interesting to mention, I think. So what they saw in this study was that supplementation of 500 milligrams of alpha GPC could reduce the levels of TSH significantly. Now TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormones. And if TSH levels are high, this typically means you are hypothyroid. So you have uh, a poorly working thyroid. And by reducing these levels, you might increase actually your metabolism and your thyroid health. Now they hypothesized in this research that it might be because alpha GPC increases dopamine as well, which in turn is responsible for reducing TSH. So, what we can conclude from this little hypothesis is that it might be the case that alpha GPC can increase dopamine levels and also improve thyroid health. So the next question we're going to answer is, is alpha GPC supplementation dangerous? And specifically, is it dangerous when it comes to heart disease? Because there are two studies that show some kind of worrisome results. So the first study here, we have that the nutritional supplement alpha-GPC promotes atherosclerosis. So that means the clogging up of the blood vessels. And the second study is titled Association of Alpha-GPC with Subsequent Stroke Risk After 10 Years. And the result of that study, in the results it says, individuals using alpha-GPC had a 40%, 6% higher risk of stroke. So that seems to be very significant. So how would that work? Well, we get alpha GPC or choline in through our diet. And what happens in the gut is that among other things, this is converted to something called TMA. And TMA, when it comes into the liver, is then converted to TMAO. And TMAO is in turn related to atherosclerosis and other sort of inflammatory and different pathways that are related to heart disease. So this is very simplified exp explanation of how it works just to keep it quick and simple. So all in all, alpha GPC, if we get it through food or through supplementation, will eventually raise T 
DMAO levels in the body, which are linked in some studies to these different things that can cause heart issues. But is TMAO really a cause of heart disease? There are actually some data points that question this statement. Let's, for example, have a look at fish. So fish is actually very high in choline and GPC. And this is the same GPC that we see in alpha GPC. So we see, for example, salmon, very high in choline and GPC. And fish is also naturally very high in TMAO. It actually contains TMAO already. So for example, cod, very commonly eaten, and it is quite high in TMAO. We see about 400 to 500 milligrams per 100 gram. Now, there are several studies that looked at this and they all saw that, for example, here, in models adjusted for demographic characteristics and mutually adjusted for food groups, SFFQ assessments of fish and egg intakes were significantly associated with increased TMAO concentration. And in this study, TMAO plus TMA content varied widely across fish and seafood species. Consumption of fish sticks, cod, and to a lesser extent, salmon, led to significant increases in circulating TMAO levels. So what we see is that fish can definitely increase TMAO levels in the body, similarly to alpha GPC. However, when we look at this study, when they looked at fish consumption and heart disease, they say 27 studies investigated the association between fish consumption and coronary heart disease mortality. And the summary estimate showed that higher fish intake was significantly associated with a lower coronary heart disease mortality. So what we see is that fish is high in TMAO, high in choline, so in other words, fish seems to have a similar effect on TMAO as alpha GPC. It also contains choline. However, in this case, it is not responsible for an increase in heart disease, but a decrease in the risk of heart disease. So you start to wonder, how can it be that alpha GPC is responsible for an increase in heart disease because it increases TMAO? But fish is not. Fish actually shows the opposite. So maybe it is not TMAO that is causing the problems. So there's actually another study where they go very in depth into this. And if you're interested, you can read it all. I will just give the summary and conclusion here. Basically what they find is what is written in the final sentence of this little piece here. It can be concluded that TMAO increases in patients are the result rather than the cause of disease. So in other words, they took a look at a lot of available evidence and what they hypothesized and think is the case is that not that TMAO causes heart disease, but people that have heart disease simply have higher TMAO levels as a result of that heart disease. So it's not a cause of heart disease, but a result. So if you want to know more about this, there's actually a great video by this guy, Mark McCarthy, and he goes very much into depth about TMAO and whether it increases heart disease or not. I'll put the link in the description if that is something that interests you. Now, another video related to this, which is also very interesting, is this video by More Plates, More Dates, another YouTuber. And he basically was taking 1200 milligrams a day of alpha GPC. So this is a very high dosage actually for 30 plus days. And when they look at his blood work results, they did not see any significant increase in TMAO. So that is also interesting. So somebody actually showing his blood work after taking alpha GPC supplementation, and they did not even see an increase in TMAO. And finally, Andrew Huberman also takes alpha GPC. So Andrew Huberman is someone that has a podcast, the Huberman Lab podcast, and he often talks about all sorts of uh, health related subjects. And he also talked about the benefits of alpha GPC for focus, for example. And in this segment, he discusses that maybe um, alpha GPC can increase TMAO and risk of stroke. So he is also worried about this, but he says that to decrease that risk or to decrease actually the TMAO production, he also takes 600 milligrams of garlic extract and that helps to decrease the TMAO production 
and as a result, he's not so worried when he takes Alpha GPC. To conclude, does Alpha GPC increase the risk of heart disease? Well, we just don't know. So what we do see is that Alpha GPC can potentially increase TMAO, and TMAO in turn seems to be linked to an increased risk of heart disease in some studies. On the other hand, we see some people actually like that video showing that even though they take a lot of alpha GPC, it may not actually raise TMAO. And we see also some research that shows that maybe TMAO is not actually a cause of heart disease. Maybe the link between heart disease and TMAO is simply misunderstood. And finally, we see also that TMAO production can be suppressed by taking, for example, garlic extract. So this is what we know about alpha GPC, TMAO and heart disease and you will really have to draw your own conclusions. Now, something else important to mention, I think, is that as we saw earlier in the beginning of the presentation, alpha GPC is a great source of choline. And when we look at the data on choline and what people are eating, we see the following. Recent analysis indicate that large portions of the population, approximately 90% of Americans, are well below the adequate intake for choline. In other words, 90% of people seem to be under eating choline. They're simply not getting enough choline from their diet. So alpha GPC can actually correct this deficiency because it's a great source of choline. And in that sense, I would say maybe it can actually benefit us instead of being unhealthy um, and causing problems with our heart, maybe it can actually benefit us if so many people are deficient in choline. Now when it comes to risks and downsides, we just talked about TMAO and you really have to draw your own conclusions on that part. So just evaluate the available data as I presented it and make your own conclusions. Now when it comes to other side effects, there's actually something that is called a no observed at first effect level, which just means that if you take alpha GPC in this amount or lower than this amount, you will not see any side effect. And this amount was set at 150 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. So if you're just looking at an average person that weighs 60 kilograms, that means that person already has to take more than 9,000 milligrams to exceed that level. But typical intake of alpha GPC, it's much lower than 9,000 milligrams. So I do not think this is going to be an issue. When it comes to dosage and quality, we see that when it comes to increasing workout performance or focus, people typically take about 300 to 600 milligrams. But when we're looking at the research for anti-dementia or Alzheimer's, 600 to 1200 milligrams is more um, commonly seen. And sometimes this is split up in multiple doses. Quality is not really a concern when we talk about alpha GPC. So from personal experience, I have taken alpha GPC as a pre-workout and so I just took it 60 minutes, 30 minutes before a workout and I experienced an increase in focus. And of course, at least I feel an increase in strength, but I did not do any measurements to really prove this. So this is just purely subjective, but I did feel both of these benefits, at least subjectively from taking alpha GPC 600 milligrams in my case. So final verdict, I would give alpha GPC a 7.5 out of 10. I think there is great data available that shows that alpha GPC supplementation might increase strength in young, healthy adults. Um, when we look at the improvements for focus and memory, unfortunately, we only see a good research in people that have some sort of Alzheimer's or dementia. So there is some lack of evidence there in healthy adults. And finally, we see that there is still this TMAO concern and some people find it unsettling, even though there is some data to suggest that TMAO might not be a problem. But definitely, there is no conclusion we can draw on that yet. There is still a lot of research that needs to be done on that front. So some people would simply want to avoid alpha GPC because they are not willing to take that risk. So that is all for alpha GPC. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like. It really helps me out. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments about Alpha GPC down below or any requests you might have from me. Just let me know. 
Thank you so much for watching and talk to you later.